the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast is not a substitute for a relationship with the mental health professional. So hello everyone, welcome again to another episode of the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast by your girl, Andrea Wise Brown. And today, family, okay, Victor, and let me just show y'all now. I, well, for all of the people who are on listening on the podcast, you can't see this, but you can always go to YouTube to see it. But this is Victor's book, just to show, give you a visual. And the name of the book is Rules for Slaying the Dating Game, How to Reach Your Relationship Goals. Okay, Victor. So before we get started, okay, let me take care of business. What I need you to do is to click this little bell and I need you to subscribe to the podcast. I need you to like the podcast and I need you to share the podcast. And now let's get to part two of the dating rules. Uh, You said you were married. Yes. You said now you have a fiance, Right. right? Okay. And so, um, I mean, I don't know how much you want to share or whatever about your marriage and why and all that. Oh, I got Are you divorced? And- yeah, I'm an open book. It's not a problem. You an open book. Yeah. Okay. All right. No. And so you just telling me what you just said about that one thing yeah. just made me think about your personal story, um, you know, about the reason for divorcing. And so, because then that's going to lead me into another rule. Okay. So if you don't mind, right? You said you were married for how long? 24 years. For 24 years. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. That's an investment. Yeah. But it also means that you loved her and yes. I'm sure that she loved you. Yes. Yeah. So if you don't mind sharing, you said you're an open book. Mm-hmm. Why did we leave or separate or divorce like what was that choice because you made me think of that when you said that one thing that's that's dangling in my head yeah with me um i mean we went we went to five different marriage counselors during during the marriage okay uh, because Ooh. i wanted to save the marriage i wanted to to help it i wanted a healthy marriage yes. um, not just sometimes but i wanted to use those building blocks um to benefit so I believed in getting help. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was, you know, go to church therapists, go to, you know, professionals outside of the church, you know, spend money and time wherever it's required. Yes. With me. And I, and it's funny because I always said I'm a crumbs on a countertop kind of guy. Okay. Um, meaning I, you like the crumbs or you don't, or mean, you are the crumb. Meaning I do not like crumbs on a countertop. <laughs> okay. But the crumbs on a countertop means to me okay. that you're not handling business in the home. Oh, uh, if I'm having to pick up your clothes, your underwears and socks and, and bras, and if I'm stepping over your stuff, um, then that's to me, that's unacceptable. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say that, because I always consider myself, uh, uh, an exceptional person. I want to be an exceptional mate, an exceptional dad, an exceptional employee, an exceptional writer, an exceptional friend, which means going above and beyond, yes. which means doing the most, mm-hmm. not doing my best because your best is subjective. When a person says, oh, I came home from work and I was tired and I did my best, but I didn't help, you know, with kids homework and I didn't help with this and I didn't help with that, but I was doing my best, but you didn't do the most. Cause if you had done the mm. most, even though we come home tired, I'm still going to the grocery store. Mm. I'm picking up the dry cleaning, yeah. you know, and I'm paying bills mm-hmm. and I'm cutting the yard and I'm helping the kids. Mm. I'm doing the most when I'm tired. I might not do all the things I want to do, but yeah. I'm still going to do the most I can do. Mm-hmm. So to me, it was reciprocity. I didn't think it was important. And it took me almost 20 years before I realized that uh-huh. that's what that crumbs on the countertop was. That was for you. That, that was your- That was my thing. It was like, once I realized you are not interested in reciprocating all that I'm giving and trying to be exceptional, mm-hmm. then the crumbs on the countertop are going to piss me off enough to leave. Got you. Wow. And, and I, what you're saying is the crumbs on the countertop represents yes right right then her not taking care of business the shortcoming exceptionally yes because that was your buy-in right that was your buy-in and your commitment mm-hmm. and so in the beginning of the relationship did she say that that was her buy-in too that she accepted that commitment or see, you we, just kind of rolled with we, what it was i'm a 30 year old well i didn't know I didn't know better. I got it. You know, I'm a 30 year old. I'm, I'm dealing with uh, millions of dollars in my office every day, mm. but coming home, having no idea how to make a relationship work, mm-hmm. how to talk about the things, because if I'm selling you a product or doing a bank loan, a business loan, mm-hmm. we're going to go through all the particulars mm. and make sure that this is a good deal for you and a good deal for us. Right. Mm. In relationships, we don't do that. Mm. 
We say, she's cute. I like him. He's strong. She's smart. I like the way he treats me. I like the way she looks at me. Those are the things that on our checkbox mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. we go down the list. Mm-hmm. When it, and when it really amounts to then when, when you get accustomed or used to having those things on a regular basis, then you get to the meat of the relationship. Are we a good fit when we're both tired? Mm. How do we argue when we're both upset? Do we fight fair? Mm-hmm. Um, do I belittle him when I'm upset and I just say that's just how I am? Mm-hmm. You know, do I call her out her out of her name when I'm upset and say that's just what men do? Mm-hmm. You know, those those are the things that can make or break a relationship. Yeah. You know, and those are the things we don't talk about mm-hmm. until we get heated. And you already know this. It is a man's relation, it is a man's responsibility to keep the tone and tenor in a relationship. Oh, okay. So you sound like Steven, James Dixon. We did this series together. I'm just saying in that regard where he said, he said something about um, a man's leadership Mm -hmm. or lack of leadership is why the relationship fails or succeeds. Right. That, that's what he said. Right. So I don't know. Is that what you're saying? I, I would say 95% of the time. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because, and, and I love it the way he said that, because if a man is responsible, as far as I'm concerned, for the tone and tenor of the relationship, yes. when things aren't um, at their best yes, and a woman gets emotional, yes. a man can't rise to meet her emotion. Because mm. how is how are you going to tamper things down mm. and say, babe, babe, hold on, r- relax. I know you're upset whether I did something or I accuse you of doing something, no matter what the problem is, we're not going to attack each other. We're going to attack the problem. Mm. And he brings it down, brings the tone down. Unfortunately, a lot of men, and I don't want to say because most of us are raised by single women. Okay. You can say that. But too many of us, when a woman gets heated, we want to match up here. Oh, come and on. we want to argue them and be emotional, as emotional as a woman. That That's not your role. Well, and, and you know what, you know, that's led by ego and pride. Yes. Right. Ego and pride and wanting to win, wanting to win. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. In that mm-hmm. immediate situation. Right. So instead of thinking past that situation, right, I just want to win right now. So, oh, you ain't going to make me feel small. You're not going to, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, emasculate me. Right. So you going here, I'm going here, I'm going Right. Which is immature. Right. Right. And you have to grow. Men who do that need to grow past that moment. Absolutely. So I do agree with you on that. Right. So what you're saying is it's the man's responsibility. This is what Mm -hmm. I think you're saying. It's the man's responsibility to keep the tone of the relationship. Is that what you said? When we're in conflict. Right. To set the tone and tenor during, especially during conflict. Okay. Right. But women do have a responsibility too. Cause I already know men out here are saying to me, cause they've already told me this, Andre, you telling us to do this. You telling us to do that. Well, what about women? Yeah. Well, she, she talking and she clapping her hands and she moving her shoulders. And so, and yelling at me, I, I'm just not going to allow a woman just to yell at me. Why That's not? What say. Why not? Ooh. And, I, and I'll tell you, because I've, I've been in relationships before and after that marriage okay. where women uh, sometimes I like a strong woman. Yes. Um, I like a woman who can speak her mind yeah. and, and share her voice. Uh-huh. I will not be hollered at mm-hmm. by a woman. So when a woman does that, I can just sit and listen. Until she realizes I'm not getting through to him it's so good. at all. Or I can say, I tell you what, when you feel really feel like talking and conversing to me, let me know I'm going to be in the other room. Oh, I say that all the time. Mm-hmm. But I, I say that not only to men, I say that to women. Yes. Because you cannot argue with yourself. A person <laughs> cannot argue with themselves. Yes. So if you're in a relation and for me, right, but I'm a woman speaking, you're speaking from a man's perspective, right. but I'm saying either one, if you're in a relationship and your partner is yelling or cursing or, you know, wants to keep engaging in argument, you can use your power to draw a boundary. Yes. I'm done. It's over and I'm not. So if you close your mouth, mm-hmm. They arguing, they yelling, they ain't arguing with you like you're done. And if you feel uncomfortable, then you get up and you leave, you remove yourself and you can state, I'm going to remove myself from this. Yes. And when you reposition yourself or get yourself together, Mm -hmm. yeah, you want to speak respectfully, then we can, you know, restart this conversation. Yeah. But but the words you said is boundaries. And, And even in my marriage and in the relationship I'm in now, I've had to say, 
uh, I'm, this is unacceptable to me. Mm. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and be a part of this. Um, I'm not going to talk to you like that. And I don't want you talking to me like that. And women will say, well, oh my goodness, I've heard it almost my whole life. <laughs> So you're going to run away. No, I'm going to remove myself. That's right. I'm not it's running different. anywhere. That's right. Either I'm going to be on the other side of this room. I'm going to be in another room. Or I'm going to get in my car and drive to a place you're not. <laughs> <laughs> not you're not. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I don't I don't like you right now. I don't like the way you treat me right now. That is yeah. freaking hilarious. And, and I, remember I having don't a, like you and, right now. Yeah, I don't, and which is okay. I love you. I don't like you right now. I don't like the way you treat me. I don't like the way this is making me feel. And I refuse to match your yes. emotion. Yes, yeah, that's good. I, I mean, I'm I'm from the streets, single uh -huh. single mom with two kids. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm a hood dude. Okay. My woman should never see that part of me. Mm. Unless I'm protecting her, she should never see that part of me. Okay. And it's like you're trying to bring that raw dog out of me. Mm. Oh, you're not gonna like him. And then I can't turn it off. Cause if I talk to you in a way that shows that I don't respect you, you don't have to leave me. I'm walking out. Mm. If you could drive me to that point, you can make if you do something that makes me feel or makes me react in less than a man I am, mm -hmm. well, I got to go. Okay. I, I got to go. Okay. All right. I know this. We get real. It's no, good. this is, just, but this is good because yeah. this is what we do on the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast. Right. We real. That's yeah. what we do. There ain't so, no BS in here. Yes. I'd be wasting my time. Go no. Ahead. So when men say, I'm yeah. not just going to let her. Yes, you can. That's you right. can let her spin her wheels. You can let her talk yeah. crazy. You know, because if, if it doesn't, if you don't agree with what she's saying. What does it mean? You can say, okay, when you finish, you know, then we can talk like adults or we could talk in something that I'm more comfortable with, or, you know, you could, you could argue with yourself. And of course it drives, especially women crazy. It drives them crazy. When but you but say, that's not the intention. The intention is not to drive them crazy. No, it isn't. Right. The intention is to set the tone yes. and to let them know that there's a boundary here and I will not allow you to talk to me like that. And I will not engage in this tennis plan, this dangerous tennis plan that you want me to do. Okay. That's what it is. Come and on. I'm, and I'm glad you said that. I, tell, ooh, I like your words. When I, when I listen to your previous podcast, I'm yes. like, I'm taking notes. This girl got some good words. <laughs> Because that's what it is. I'm not going to engage. You. I'm not. I'm not. So it's not necessarily I'm not going to sit up here and let you dog me. I'm, I'm not going to engage. That's just it. Because it's about me. It's yeah. about me. Me taking care of me, right? Me standing up for myself. Me mm -hmm. taking care of myself. Now, yeah. My mental health. That's right. My, and, and men talk about peace all the time. You want to really guard your peace? Mm. Disengage. 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 Yeah. But you disengage, but I don't want you to just, because sh disengage could look like stonewalling or shutting down. We're not going to just shut down. You're going to speak it first. Mm -hmm. This right here, I'm not doing. Right. When you're ready to have a real conversation, a respectful conversation, Absolutely. then come on, baby, we can do that. But right here, yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Okay. I think that that's good. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So that's so good. So thank you. So your thing divorced but your thing was the breadcrumbs yeah. okay so we needed to know that <laughs> but so listen so then you divorced and now you was out here in these streets i don't know but i'm just going with it in my head this is what i'm thinking right and so then all of a sudden what i see is you was a man that was separated and then divorced you have rules in your book for dating a man who's separated right okay we, we and, got to and, and all the rules for a man who's divorced recently divorced that's right in a minute okay okay so this is what i want us to do I think it's on page 113, rule 277. Let's go on over there. I need more tabs. That's okay. Because you no. said 113. Yes. So the rule is 277. I believe the page is 113. Ooh, and, and what I tell women to do when they're reading this uh -huh. is um, get your highlighter out. Yes. You, whether you use a crayon uh -huh. or you circle it or, or whatever, because these are things that you want to discuss with your with your friends. Yes, yes, yes. No, I totally agree. And you can kind of go back to it? them. I found it, but it's okay here. You don't even need to find it because you wrote the book. You're okay. going to be good. You're going to be good. Okay. So rule 277 says, this is when, listen now, <laughs> he's saying this to you women right okay so the rules for dating men who are separated so he's not fully divorced right. even though he has rules for the divorced man too right but he's separated okay so rule 277 says 
communicate about the separation. So it's okay for women to communicate about the separation, you saying? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Oh, absolutely. Okay. All right. Hold on. Keep on going. All right. So that's kind of easy. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to go to 281. Right. I'm going to read it for you. So it says, expect the emotional roller coasters. Mm -hmm. So a man who separated, you you gonna have to go on roller coasters with him. It's he's going on a roller coaster, and yeah. if you're riding with him, means you're going on a roller coaster. Imagine, yeah. ima well, well, see there you go. I'm and, just and, saying. No, you're 100 percent correct. Imagine guy gets separated, he has built a life mm -hmm. and a home with a woman, mm -hmm. uh, especially if they have kids. If they have kids, young kids still in school, young kids in college, because mm -hmm. there's degrees to this. There's there's levels to it. Okay. He's saying, I'm separated. I feel like I'm done with that relationship. I'm not ready to file for divorce. Are they going to counseling or not? Because if they're going to counseling, he's not ready to give up. He's fighting for his relationship. I it, say run, but it, go ahead, Victor. Okay, well, you know, and and <laughs> in a high probability of the time, it's probably mm -hmm. a good idea to say, let him decide who and what he's trying to be and catch him on the other side. Yes. Uh, and I agree that I would not date someone seriously. Okay. While they're going, while they're separated. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that's what happened when the young lady met me. She said, well, you know, you separated, uh, y'all not going through counseling anymore. And I said, okay, here's the point. We went through not, uh, three months of counseling, okay. nine weeks. Mm -hmm. I prayed on it, got a revelation that she is never going to be what I need her to be. Not that she's a bad person, not that she's wrong. Mm -hmm. She's not going to be what I need. Okay. So at this point, I need to stop inconveniencing her and move on by my business. Oh, that's so good. Yes. Stop yeah. inconveniencing her and move on about my business. Right. Okay. When 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 I when we cannot agree on what your role is mm -hmm. and how I want to be treated, we can't agree on that. I need to stop inconveniencing you because clearly I'm I'm inconveniencing you. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm bothering you. Yeah. I'm bothering you trying to get you to love me right. Mm. So I need to remove myself. And so after that happened, met a young lady and she said, you, you haven't filed, but you, I said, okay, I'm going to file. I'm not going to file during the holidays. No, oh. I, I don't think that's fair to her that she has to deal with Christmas and new years with a Disney girl on a file to me during the holidays. I can't believe this BS. So okay. I said, I'll wait until the first of the year. And if you're still interested, I'm still going to be interested in you. Okay. Um, I want to circle back and, and do this. So, um, uh, I showed her the information. And then we went out for New Year's Eve. Wait, what information? The the information my attorney was going to file like on the third. Oh, okay. On the first business day so, of the so, new year. So you was trying to you were proving to her yeah, that, that this, you were not lying, yes. that this was honestly what you were going to do. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. Because I liked her that much. Okay. Well, how long was you dating her? Because you was married. So help me out. Help a sister out over here. When I'm separated. Okay. For how long? I was separated for eight months. Okay. And so like uh we had just finished the counseling sessions. Okay. Cause you did say you went to five different therapists, not well, within that, the eight months, right? Within the 24 years. I understand. But okay. the counselors that we went through were saying the same things that uh -oh. the counselors had said throughout the marriage. Oh, So that's when I realized I'm right back where I started in year one, we had the same place and I've been hoping and praying that things would change and they're not, they're saying the same things. Mm. So I said, okay, that's when I, I got the revelation that this, this is always going to be what it is, bro. Okay. And you get to decide. Whether you're living in a 5,000 square foot house, three car garage in a nice neighborhood and all this other stuff, mm -hmm. if that is important to you at, or as important as your peace. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, man, please, I'd rather live in a cardboard box, All right. you know, than be in a home, a beautiful home with a person that I really can't stay in at this point. Mm -hmm. And I know women usually say that, but man, we, we feel the same way. We probably just don't ex express it. Mm, I got you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you were, y'all were already separated for eight months. Yes. Okay. But you just didn't file yet. Right. Okay. All right. So now you got the paperwork. Mm -hmm. So you show her the paperwork and then January hits and is there still a roller coaster? What's the deal with that? Well, I didn't, I didn't allow her to come on the roller coaster with me. Okay. Cause after I filed, I was done. Mm. You know, I'm done. I'm finished. I know guys who would tip good. back with the eggs and they hook up and they smash and they uh -huh. get together and uh-uh. Uh -huh. 
everybody can't get on this ride. Okay. Uh, everybody can't get on this ride. Okay. And, and I can be a, an emotional, mm -hmm. uh, sexual individual. Mm -hmm. I was I, well, it's grown folks. So it's grown, yeah, yeah, come here. You know, no, I, no, this ain't I, for babies. Come I can on. have an emotional penis that means if I don't like you, you mm -hmm. can get this. Okay. If I am not happy with where we are, you can get this. Okay. And women get to decide the same thing. That's true. Uh, a lot of men don't take it that seriously, but you can't treat me any kind of way and expect to, to be satisfied by me. That's I'm just, true. it's not just not going to happen. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So women withdraw, men can withdraw too. That's right. I think it should be discussed. And yes. it's like, you know, well, you know, I'm. I'm sorry. And we, can we talk about it after we we hook up? And I really got needs right now. I'm like, oh no, that's not the way this works. Oh no, we we have. When some, I'm done, I'm done. We need some issues that be, can be resolved, and once they can be resolved, I move on. I don't believe in circling back. This is just me. I don't believe. No, in circling I, back. there are the men who say exactly this. They do not believe in circling back. Okay. Yeah, because I think some it, do. It, but... it, it blocks your blessings that are are to come. Mm -hmm. If you still, because you're saying, God, I, I want this type of woman, I want this type of man, mm -hmm. and you, you've you removed yourself from other relationships, well, if you keep going back to a woman or man that you know doesn't fit that, then you're playing with God, as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. Okay. And you're lying to yourself, because that is acceptable to you, mm -hmm. because you keep going back to it. Mm, you know? I got you. Yeah. No, that's good. It's like trying to get somewhere in life going forward, but you keep looking in the rear view, in the, in the rear view uh what is it glass yeah window. Rear, mirror yeah. right right mirror you keep looking back looking back looking back so you're never gonna get where it is that you need to go you, you cannot fully get there mm. or it might take you twice as long oh that's good i mean think about it dude if i'm if i keep looking back saying well maybe if okay i'm gonna go back and, and turn around make you turn and see if things have changed okay i'm just gonna i'm gonna stop and pull over and i'm no what, what's ahead of you if you're serious about it mm -hmm. if what's ahead of you in a relationship the goals you're trying to to reach are ahead of you mm -hmm. then you should only look forward Okay. Yeah. So what you doing looking back, circling back, getting with somebody that you said wasn't worth a damn, okay. but you're still sleeping with him. That's good. You can't stand her ass, but you're still sleeping with her. Okay. I, it, it, might, it. it might just be me. No, 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 no. I don't think it's just you. I do not think it's just you, but it's it's good. Okay. Let's keep on going. Okay. All right. Because that's the point here. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. And so wait, so please tell me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rule 286 is expect the X files. What is the X Files? Uh, it says be prepared mm -hmm. uh, for stories about the X to pop up um, during a relationship uh, because it like a plot twist because it does happen when you are involved or getting to know someone, mm -hmm. and this is is this is still from the um, the separated man, mm -hmm. right? This is separated man. You need to to allow him a little range to mm -hmm. talk about the separation. Okay. You certainly don't want a man that that's all he talks about. She wasn't this and she didn't do this and I can't stand her. And it, you know, you don't want him to just like you're a woman. You don't want him dogging another woman. That's true. You, you don't, you don't want Because that. you know what's going to happen. If something happened with y'all, he going to dog you. He's, oh, certainly. Well, he's most certainly going to dog you. Absolutely. But sometimes mm -hmm. exchanging the X-Files or sharing the X-Files and, and, and all breakups aren't bad. Okay. All breakups aren't, aren't toxic or hectic. That's right. Because I have... Uh, share some of the stories that were funny, you know, and you should be able to do that, but there's a fine line. Okay. Women should expect him to say some things about his former relationship, whether or how it started, what broke it apart or how it ended. Okay. And I think that should be okay. If No, if I think so too, because I think that it teaches the woman where he is, mm -hmm. how he processes, how he makes decisions, right? So she should be taking notes. And I think that, yes, she should ask those questions and hear those. Yes. But be talking about this ex all the time. Absolutely not. You going over there and you be with her. <laughs> Circle back. Circle back yeah. and stay exactly yeah. there. You're not done. <laughs> That's clearly, right. Clearly you're not done That's or right. finished. So my, my, yeah. And I, please, baby, you go. <laughs> okay. okay 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 so this is good okay all right so now we are going to move on to so this is okay. good so now we're gonna we're gonna just talk about um mm, women who are dating so that was dating someone who was separated right. now we're just moving on to dating just a few more rules so dating i thought this was interesting what did you call them thrifty romeos <laughs> Thrifty Romeos, okay? So this would be men, cheap, ladies. Cheap, cheap dudes. Cheap dudes. Cheap dudes. Okay. Okay. All right. So, you know, it was a few things that you said. 
Uh, can you just tap us off just a little bit? If you don't want me to specifically go, I mean, you got rule 138. One of them was something about um coupon cutting, letting him share coupons. Then another one was let him uh, let us share Netflix. Like we going to share. That's a date. I'm going to share my Netflix with you. You're going to share your Netflix with me. And then that's a date. Am I not supposed to? Are you telling these ladies out here they are not supposed to expect anything more? Hey, family. Come on over here, because I have something for you. Starting off with a go-to guide for keeping your minds healthy and strong. This right here is the Bible to mental health. It's your mental health Bible. The name of it is Six Pillars to Power Up Your Mind and Make Mental Health a Lifestyle. Hmm. Everything that you need to know about keeping your minds healthy and strong is in this go-to guide. Where you get it from? Well, you get it from awisebrown.com backslash shop. But in this go-to guide, honey, in this mental health Bible, you know what you're going to find out? You're going to find out the benefits of aromatherapy oh, and how it can shift your mood. But guess what? You don't have to go anyplace else to look for your aromatherapy because your girls got you. Okay? You can get some aromatherapy here. This is aromatherapy. is in this candle. This is called... A slice of happiness. It makes me tingle, like literally makes me tingle. A slice of happiness. This is a cruelty-free candle with no parabens, no formaldehyde, and no known suspected carcinogenics. Now, you know, you go out here and you find these candles that smell good, but are they good for you? Are they good for your brain? Come on now, get real with yourself. Well, this one smells delicious. And it's good for you. Made with essential oils. It's a soy candle. Amazing. Uh, you can burn it or you can just walk by and smell it. Lord have mercy. It's so good. Okay, so that's your, your candle, your aromatherapy, which raises the dopamine in your brain. That's your natural feel good. No transmitters in your brain. All right, y'all. And, oh, I'm a part of you. You're a part of me. We are a family. We got hoodies now, and these are unisex hoodies, and they wear well, they wash well, and they feel so good. So you can wear them over your clothes, you know what I'm saying, and look dope, or you can wear them as your clothes with nothing under them, which I like to do often. And when you travel everywhere, I mean, every time I wear them, I'm moving around, people are always asking me whether I'm traveling, going to the supermarket, what's that, who's that? And I'm like, mental health is a lifestyle, because see, this is on the back. Okay, they come in white and they come in black. I'm like, join the family. Mental health is a lifestyle podcast. So there you go. Family, don't you ever say that I ain't give you nothing. You get all of these things from awisebrown.com backslash shop. All right. Hey, I got your goods. I got you. You don't have to go anyplace else. I'll see you on the other side. No. What it says under, okay, because I have 14 sections, 55 chapters. This is one of the chapters called Men and Money, right? Yes, Men and Money. We talk about Men and Money. Mm -hmm. When you're dating a thrifty Romeo mm -hmm. or, quote, unquote, a cheap dude, mm -hmm. sometimes guys have wealth, don't want to share it. Some guys have or don't have wealth at all. So you could have a thrift Romeo with money who just doesn't see the value in taking a woman out. Mm. Or taking a woman out as much as she would like to be taken out. And if you don't want to spend your money, because I know some women out there is like, okay, if he's pursuing me, why am I interested in saving his money? Well, to get to know him. And sometimes he might be in a bad spot financially, might be coming out of a divorce, or he just might not have uh, been able to save the kind of money that he, a man at his age, you feel like he should have acquired by now. Mm -hmm. Netflix. And this is something that I don't do, Groupon, because I know Groupon can save you a lot of money, but I've never looked at Groupon. I've never looked at coupons. Uh, but I would like to think that if a woman liked me enough, and I know you fall apart. I I'm cranking you, up. I just fall apart over there. That if I was going through a rough time mm -hmm. or something or whatever it was, and I had a woman who I didn't, who I couldn't afford to take out as much as she would like to be, I would like to think that if we did putt-putt golf, 
Okay. Um, Netflix. Okay. Uh, the museum, something okay. that's really not expensive, right. but different from just going out okay. to, to restaurants, to concerts, uh, something that's inexpensive. And I know coupon clipping is people like, ain't, ain't trying to have no dude who's going to coupon clip me into their relationship. <laughs> exactly. And that's what they should be thinking. And I'm going to tell you why, but go okay. ahead. Okay. Before you say should, I'm just going to say, uh -huh. if, if we have the same standard yes for every man who's pursuing you mm -hmm. what if the guy god sent to you doesn't meet that standard well guess what you know what i'm you know what in my head no 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 <laughs> honest how, to how god because we gonna how to, yeah but look i'm gonna be totally honest 10 okay. toes down when i just said that right mm -hmm. i am speaking for myself right okay because guess what just came up right there's somebody for everybody yeah. so there's some women out here who love cutting coupons and they would appreciate honestly they mm -hmm. would appreciate a man who also cuts coupons there are some women out here who are thrifty right right and they would appreciate mm -hmm. a man who is also thrifty so there you go i stand corrected boom no i like that true and, and so throughout this discussion yes i'm seeing some of the things that you're saying and it's it's giving me a uh, an epiphany mm. i'm saying some things and you're saying okay never thought about it like that mm. that's what this whole book is about presenting information in a way that you can benefit that just never occurred to you, mm -hmm. but can benefit you. That That's it. That is the whole crux. If you don't get anything else out of this podcast, that is the whole crux of this book. Putting you in a better position uh, with just things that you've never considered. Okay, so here we go. We just got two more. This one. So we talked about the thrifty man dating the thrifty man. So what about women out here who want to date the wealthy man? Yep. So I know one of the rules you said, okay, okay, okay. there was a rule about I want to date now these are for women who want to date a wealthy man but you said a rule is to be independent that's right but well isn't that the opposite of someone wait hold on we're gonna go a little bit because I'm gonna just get it all in one because I know your answer is um uh without you know going through each and every one now, this is good okay no and then you said uh discuss financial planning this is with the wealthy guy. That's right. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> good, 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 good. And then you said, avoid financial dependence. But the goal for some of these women that you're speaking to, mm -hmm. they are trying to obtain and date a wealthy guy. So they get with him and now you telling them, we'll be independent. Mm -hmm. Do some financial planning with him. Yeah. That's and right. avoid financial dependence. So I don't know. That's kind of sounding like an oxymoron there. Okay. We can take it one by one. Uh, one point at a time. Women, if you are going to or interested in dating a wealthy man. Okay. My suggestion and my and a rule is to keep your independence. Mm -hmm. Independence doesn't mean, <coughs> excuse me. Mm -hmm. Independence doesn't mean lean on him. Okay. But you should always have a level of independence mm -hmm. because what happens if after a year or two or 10, he decides, uh, I want someone else mm -hmm. Good. or, or uh, I've lost all of my wealth mm. and you, and, and y'all both look at each other and you like, Oh, I don't have a thing to show for this other than a lot of expensive things around the house. Mm. I didn't consider myself a side of this relationship or a part of this relationship. I didn't save anything. I didn't put anything away. I thought he took care of all that. Mm. That's that's reason one that she should maintain her independence because he could always flip or trip out. Yes. Okay. Or, I lose, like or it. lose his wealth. Okay. I like it. Okay. I like and it. And what was mm -hmm. it? Because you had two, you had three. What was, what it was? don't matter because that pretty much just says <laughs> all the rest of them, right? Because if right. you don't need to be dependent on him, you need to have your own. Right. And then you look, I can now turn it around now that you said that. I see what your intention was. But even for financial planning, then that puts her in the loop. And now she's engaged mm -hmm. in the case that, and she's learned some things in the case that, yeah, he does lose his money or he decides to lose her. Yes. So I like it. Whenever, when I say when people get married, mm -hmm. it's really two businesses merging. You know, one doesn't get acquired mm -hmm. by another. One doesn't take over the other. They merge. So you have two businesses merging. You have a COO or a co-COO in a marriage or a COO and a, CO, a CEO and a COO, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. He's the head. You're beneath him, but you're equal. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you have something like that, if you are interested in the finances, you can see something coming that might be dangerous, might come, you see coming 
a long ways away. Mm -hmm. I noticed that we're, if you don't talk to them, mm -hmm. you're not going to see it until it happens. If you have financial planning conversations is, you know what, two years ago, we stopped putting money into this. So we, we, we've liquidated two annuities. Why did we do that? Mm. That tells you that there's problems in the relationship. There's problems in his business relationships as well. Mm -hmm. Um, He's cashing out y'all's money, paying for his side chick. Mm. Oh, yeah. So okay. you need to know about the finances of your wealthy man. Okay. If he says this is none of your business, mm -hmm. then I already know he's doing something that he's keeping out of your business. I love it. Just know that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What, okay. what you don't want, uh -huh. you don't want somebody showing up at your job or your house saying mm -hmm. your, your husband cheating on us. <laughs> you don't want some chick showing up saying your husband cheating on us. He been he been sponsoring me for a couple of years now, but now he got him a new babe. So I just want you to know he cheating on us. That's what you don't. Want. I got you. And so you're saying that's why it's important to do some financial planning with him together, yes. so that they're in the know about the finances. Right. And However, it, but if they just dating. Oh no, yeah, you were dating. Good luck. <laughs> good luck. Because there are some guys who are very very. Um, passionate about you, but also open with sharing their money. Mm -hmm. Some guys are open and share their money with people they date. Some guys are open to, to only sharing their wealth with mm -hmm. women they marry. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, he got all this money. He ain't doing nothing for A, B, and C, and D. And that might be true. So just because he has wealth doesn't mm -hmm. mean he's going to share with you. Okay. That's good. Which goes back to not losing your independence Absolutely. and, and not um, being dependent on him. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. So we're going to end here. I'm going to, okay, before not, you end, can I say one more thing? Well, yeah, but listen, I'm not totally, totally ending. I'm just telling you that now the, the plane has landed. Yes. Yeah, you can, I'm going to let you say whatever you want to say. Cause I have just two questions for you outside of your rules, okay. but and I want people to know when they go get your book, I just want y'all to know that even if you know er, how everybody's doing this ghosting now, so you're doing this online dating and not. So in the book, they can find out what to do the rules when to ghost someone or when you're ghosting, right. whatever. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing that I love that I saw that it was something about closure. So like after a breakup, these were the rules. He has a lot of rules for closure. So I want y'all to get that in the book. Okay. And then I have two questions. So if you want to say whatever you want to say, you can say it now or you can do it after the question. No, just before we leave this this section, I want okay. to talk about just briefly. There's also rules about dating a professional athletes. Yes, I or, saw that know, in there too. Or, or formal professional athletes or professional coaches. Mm. There are, are a number of things to be considered. Women's just like, okay. And I think it was how our discussion about this began. I want to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. I want for a wealthy man to do these things for me. Mm -hmm. uh, what they call it now, soft life. I want a soft life. Oh. And I don't think there's anything wrong with a soft life, mm -hmm. but there are a number of things that come with it, which, are, which is why there are rules for dating someone who is in professional sports, has been in professional sports, or is a part of that lifestyle. Yeah, because you got to pay for that soft life in one way or another. And a lot of times it has to do with your sense of self-worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to have to learn your position. Okay. Oh, I love that. I see you brought that right around the sports. I'm you just got, saying. Yeah, you got, you got, you're right. You got to play your position. You're going to have to learn to play your position for that. That's right. There's a lot that you have to give up yes. for a soft life. Yes. It, uh. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm just saying. Okay. So these two questions, my brother, and then I'm going to let you go. Okay. And I'm just letting you know that I am enjoying this. This is so much fun and it's so good. And I, I just love the rules. I love how you wrote the rules. I love how intentional they are and yes. yet how smart they are. And I, I, I don't say anything that I do not believe. No, I really appreciate that. And I was kind of nervous uh, when you told me you're going to read the book. I was like, okay, good. Of course, I vetted it based on what I think will really benefit women. Yes. And, oh, ladies, let me tell y'all. He also has rules in there for... Um, if you dating a man who makes less money than you, I thought mm -hmm. that that was good. And I like the rules that you put in there. Right. So it, this is good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Okay. So let me ask you these two questions. Right. Simple. Okay. Victor, do you believe <laughs> that there is somebody for everybody? Absolutely. I think there are a number of somebodies for everybody. Mm. Yeah. I, I honestly believe that. Okay. When... I got separated. Some of her friends said, I've seen the way you are with her, seen the way you are with the kids. I see how you, you manage the house and the business. She's going to realize it was a mistake not to do what was required. Mm. 
required. Other women said, you ain't gonna find nobody like her. Mm. And I said, good, I hope I don't. Not just because I was in a bad <laughs> mood about the situation. <laughs> I didn't want someone who I felt was going to take me down those same paths without redirecting. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I was concerned about. So jokingly, I said, hopefully I don't. It, but the guy said, you know, there's a lot of women out there. Mm. And most of them are awful. I said, I don't believe it. I said, I don't believe it. I said, I have a lot that's of female good. friends. I have had former coworkers. I have friends that I've met through book clubs and on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I said, I choose to believe that there are, there is an amazing amount of yes. good women out there. Yes. I said, my, my, my issue is going to be, how do I decide which one's the one that's right for me? Oh, that's good. <clears throat> so, excuse me. So to have people that say, you know, there's no good women out there. It's like, okay, what have you done to them? Mm -hmm. And, or where are you looking? That's so good. Yeah. What, what are you reflecting? Yeah. Because we attract what we are. Okay. And that is just the truth. Okay. Please put a pin in that. Because earlier you said something that, mm -hmm. I, that I'm glad we, we came back to it. You've had people that have said, you can have a room with a hundred people in it. Mm -hmm. The two broken people broken over the same issue will find each other. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that, I said, that doesn't make sense until I thought about it. Then I started to see it happen. You're right. You will attract what you reflect. It's so it's the truth. It's the truth. And that's why when I work with women, I teach them, you work on yourself first. Don't be first thing trying to run out here and find somebody because you're going to find the same person. They're going to look different, but they're going to have the same issues. It's going to be the same person. But once you work on you, you're working on becoming your best self and you start to grow and challenge your thoughts and challenge your childhood trauma. You become better. You become mm. more of your authentic authentic self. And once you become that and lose a lot of those insecurities, you become more secure. You will attract a secure man, yes. a more secure man. So it is, that is just the truth. It is. Energy, it ju it's just the law of attraction. It is. Yeah. For all the energy that I put out, that same energy I will receive. So if you keep attracting men who you say are broken, my sister, Come to me. Let me help you. Because what I am suggesting is that maybe you're broken too. Yes. But men will see the work you put in. Mm -hmm. Just like when men have seen the results from you working out mm -hmm. and eating better mm -hmm. and sacrificing, men see that. They're going to see the work you put in too. We're going to see it. Okay. All right. Last question. All right. Mm. Do you believe the right person will come into your life? at the right time. And we kind of did talk about this a little bit when we talked about timing, mm -hmm. but yeah. Do you believe that the right person will come into your life? Maybe not right now, but don't sweat it so much because maybe it's about timing the right time. I don't know. What are you, what are your thoughts on that? I have two schools of, of thought on that. Okay. Uh, because I talk to women mm -hmm. because talking to men is, it makes the head hurt. Uh, <laughs> Because so many, we guys, love you out there, men. Yeah, we love no, you. no, I love you. You, my brother. I got you, but it makes your head hurt. Come on. <clears throat> when I talk to a, a a number of guys, mm -hmm. I will hear, "Yeah, I tried that; it didn't work." Okay, when was that? That was ten years ago. Why don't make me cuss you out? <laughs> you tried something one time mm. and it didn't work, so you gave up. Ooh, on it. come on, men! Don't give yeah, up. Yeah, don't don't give up. That try it in a different way. Try it on a different person. Mm -hmm. If you got the tools and you say, it's just like saying, I went out to fix my car. I did it. It didn't work. Okay. Maybe you had the tools. You didn't use the tools the right way. Mm. You go back and look at the manual and say, you know, or, or something comes to mind and say, you know what? I didn't take the cap off all the way. Mm. Or if I removed the, 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 whatever on top of it, that could get to it better. Don't give up because you tried one thing one time and it didn't work. Mm. And I've heard that talking to guys since college. And I was pretty popular in college. Okay. You no, know, football, track scholarship, okay. cap alpha side, um, pretty confident okay. in myself. Women like confidence. Okay. Um, so they were like, Victor, how are you seeing all these women without any issue? I said, I'm not having issue, but I'm seeing all these women with less issue than you. Cause I'm just being honest. Mm. I'm telling them I'm seeing other people and then you should see other people. I'm not trying to have a girlfriend right now. And 35 years later, it's the same. Guys are still lying to women. No, I'm not seeing anybody just you. And they know you're lying because they can't catch up with you. They don't have the accessibility. Right. Um, you're not where you're supposed to be and saying what you are doing, what you're supposed to be saying or doing. Stop lying. Stop lying. Tell the truth. Yeah. You'll be surprised how far to get you. W women respect that. Yes, they do. Yes. Women respect the truth. And women are competitive. If they know you're saying for the women, 
they're going to get to decide whether I want to put up with that, pass on it, or compete with those other women. It's so true. And there are a lot of women that will compete. Yeah. So stop lying, tell the truth, and uh, your life will be so much better. Yeah, but women don't compete. Like, <laughs> find your own, honey. Find your own. Find him that's looking for you. So do you believe that they will find the right person at the right time? Yes and no. That's why I said I have these two schools to talk. Okay. So what I suggest to women so many times in this book, and when I talk to women about the book, uh, I say, well, th- what I want to do is get you to have a better selection of men. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't want a selection. I just want one. Uh, uh, mm, mm, mm. Think about what you're saying. And I have to com- I have to to correct them on this. Not, not correct them as individuals, but correct their thinking. You don't want just one guy mm. to decide if you like him or not. You want a better selection of guys, plural, so that you can choose mm-hmm. which one fits you best at that time. Mm. Because there is a section in here about dating to find a soulmate. And then right behind it, there's a chapter talking about dating. Several, uh, several men, right? Mo- at multi, the same time. Right. Multi-dating. Mm-hmm. Uh, and two remain single. Mm-hmm. They're right behind each other. And they're not the same rules. And specifically uh, and intentionally, they're not the same rules because based on what trajectory you're on, I want something that's going to fit you at that time. I don't want no man. I don't, I want no, I don't need no man is what you hear. <laughs> I need a woman. Most mm. men need women. Mm. For women to say, I don't need a man, then why are you dating? Mm. If you're throwing your legs open and your panties on the floor, mm-hmm. clearly you need a man. Mm. So I think it's semantics and you might want to be more true to yourself. You might not feel like you need a man to be in a relationship with. Okay. But you get you need a man to strike that it, that uh scratch that itch. Mm. Well, maybe, maybe more so is that they want a man. But they feel like, and we're just talking about those specific women who say that, because I know a lot of women who say, no, I want a man and I need a man because I'm tired of paying all these bills and I'm tired of raising this kid by myself. So, so maybe we're talking about some women out here, some women out here really do want to be alone. There are some women who want to be alone. I'm telling you. Alone all the time or just. Listen, they, so their thought is right. Having sex and needing a man in their life is two different things, oh, right? Okay. So I could want a man mm-hmm. to do this with or to do that with, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I need him in my life. Right. I'm just saying that's some women's perspective. I just need his member when I need his member. Well, it could be. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, or maybe I want it. I don't necessarily, it ain't going to make me die. It's not, necess- it's not a necessity, right? That's what need is. So maybe I want it when I want it, but not necessarily need it. Yeah. I'm just saying that's for some women, and not I mean, all women. No, and I agree. And I use the term need in this instance loosely. Okay. Uh, because if I don't have a woman, I'm not going to pass away. I got you. But I'll, to, it, in order for me to experience uh, my life. Quality in, of in, life. In, yes, quality in its fullness. Yes. Uh, yeah, I need a I got you. I need a major. I got it. I got yeah. it. Okay. So then you, so you say there's a yes and then there's a no to that. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I keep, I keep falling off. Yeah. You, 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 off. you waffling. Yeah. Come on. No, uh, no, I'm just, oh, not, you're not answering. I'm not, I'm not nailing it down. Okay. One thing is, I, that's why I suggest to women to let's, let's talk about doing the rules that'll change the behaviors that'll increase your results for having several men that you can choose from. Okay. Which I think raises the probabilities of you finding what you want when you want it. Okay. Yeah. So women, I, who, and it, I hear it all the time. I'm not, nah, I don't need a whole bunch of men. Uh, I don't want a whole bunch of men to choose from. I just want one. Mm. Uh, think about what you're saying. Okay. This is good. All right. So I think this can, I, let me sum this up and you tell me okay. if, if this sounds like what you're saying or not, right? right? What you're saying is, is you can find the right man at the right time if you follow these rules. It is that simple. <laughs> it is. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that back <laughs> Yes. Because that's what you pretty much were saying. Because you pretty much saying, if you do number this, and you do this number, and you do that number, then I'm going to say, yeah, but I ain't just going to send these scissors out here telling them, yeah, they are, and they're not prepared. Yes. So that's what you were saying. It brings us back to this book. Yes. And guys, the name of the book is Rules for slaying the dating games, not game, games with an S. Yes. How to reach your relationship goals by Mr. Victor McLaughlin. Yes. Thank you so much for coming today, for joining us today and for dropping your jewels. This this (laughs) is... I mean, in the book. Come on, Victor. See what I'm saying? Well, Lambert, you have rules in there about 
joking too. Don't yeah. You? Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still a guy. Sometimes I'm very sophomore. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love the opportunity to come on. I've I've listened to and viewed some of your former um a previous podcast. And I said, this sister is different. Mm. She she different. So thanks for having me on. Uh, the book hasn't been out a month yet, but it's it's doing very well. It's helping people who use it. Yes. Use it. Tell so, them where to get it. Yeah. So please uh go get it on Amazon.com. Yes. If you go to victormclaughlin.com, it'll send you a link. Um and then, you know, if if you have questions, my email's in there. Tell them, give them the email, wherever they can, social media. Yes, you go to victormcloughlin.com. You go uh, Dating Rules on Instagram and on Facebook. Okay. Uh, yeah, go uh, to uh, at Dating Rules. And I'm going to start doing a lot of videos and dropping those just, you know, 30 second hits um, for people to keep in mind. And hopefully you'll archive them. But uh, this has been quite an experience. And uh, it's... <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't want something that was going to make women or, or put women in a position to say it's either or. No. That's why there's so many rules. There's so many guidelines and they all, they all benefit mm -hmm. uh, and intertwine with one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, it, thank, no, I agree. Thank you for noticing that. Yeah. Absolutely. I did a lot of research and homework. Uh, it, there is, there's gotta be something in there within those, um, 14 sections and 55 chapters and 600 plus rules mm -hmm. that's going to help benefit you doing this dating thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and abs I'm just going to leave it right there. Okay. Well, thank you so much again for coming and for joining me and for sharing your knowledge <sighs> with the family. Yes. And family, thank you again for listening. And I will see you guys on the next episode of the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast. By your girl, Andrea Wise Brown. You know they're going to have questions. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Then I'll have to bring you back. That'll be cool. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yes. Have a good day.